riparian habitats. A riparian habitat uh, means a creek or a river type of, uh, of habitat. The cool thing about creeks, well, the difficult thing about creeks is the fact that they keep their secrets really well. Most of the time, all of their stuff is underwater and you gotta dive or scuba or do something to get in there and explore things. But if the creek is small enough and the season is right, things begin to dry up. And as they dry up, all of their secrets get revealed. Let's go check some out. So, I'm hiking along this drying creek bed. Uh, during the late spring, early summer is a great time in Alabama to hike these smaller creeks because this is when the evaporation, we're, we're getting out of the rainy season and into the evaporation season, into the heat. And what that's doing is that's concentrating these pools of water in these deeper parts of the creek. Well, if you concentrate the water, you're gonna concentrate the wildlife. So there's a ton of fish and frogs. I've seen a couple of snakes, lots of insects. And this little guy right over here, check him out. Come here, buddy. That is a baby common snapping turtle. Now, I know that he's the common snapping turtle because this row of marginal scoots right here, that little row of scoots, there's only one row of them. If there were two rows, that would indicate that he would be the alligator snapping turtle. A Little bit rare, harder to find in this area. These guys a lot more common, that's the term, common snapping turtle. Now this guy's probably this year's hatchling. He is not much better, bigger than a silver dollar. As you can see in my hand, he's only about that big. So he's really tiny, easily fits within the palm of my hand. Now, as an adult, you pick these guys up and they're gonna get really aggressive. They're gonna be snapping and lunging in the water. They're fairly docile, but as soon as you get them out of the water, man, they start to get really, really aggressive at you. You gotta be very careful. If you're moving them across the road, typically you wanna hold them kind of gently by the tail and hold them way back here in the back part of the body to move them across, move them across the road. Uh, but these guys right here, when they're young, their strategy is really simple. I'm just gonna close my eyes because if I can't see you, you can't see me. I'm invisible. That's their strategy. Doesn't really work, but that's okay. It works for him and that's good. So this little guy, he's probably hanging out here, eating maybe some small fish, maybe a tadpole or two if he can get them. Uh, maybe some insects, um, even some plant material. Uh, snapping turtles are omnivorous. They eat both vegetation and uh, animal life. They eat both. So I'm going to go ahead and put him back. Uh, cool little find, little baby. That's good stuff. There you go, buddy. Snapping turtles. Yeah. As the water goes down, the mud comes up and every creek in America pretty much has them. You begin to find the footprints of the raccoon. Five little fingers, looks like a little handprint. This little guy was walking in that direction. I see more of his prints here, more of them over there. He might have been exploring around this area, looking for little crayfish or who knows what. But definitely, raccoons are riparian, for sure. Okay, well, we know what the raccoon was after, and that was these little guys. Oh, there we go. So these, ah, these are cray, ow, stop pinching me. <laughs> these are little crayfish, and they're all through these areas, and they do have little pinchers where they will try to grab you, and you're not trying to grab me. You're not trying to show off at all, are you? These are little crayfish. Uh, I got another little one here. So a couple of different ages of crayfish. Uh, these guys are all through these little creeks. They're all over the place. Uh, most of the raccoon scat that I find in these areas is filled with the exoskeletons of these guys. So these make up a huge diet for the raccoon as well as uh, lots of uh, vegetation and fish and carrion and anything they can get a hold of. But for sure, crayfish, these are on the diet. All right guys, I'm gonna let you go.
Okay. Oh yeah. This, this is pretty awesome right here. Here I have, well first of all, <laughs> oh yeah. There's a really big crayfish right there. Right there. That's a good size one. Got some nice size claws on them. But this is the thing that's really interesting. This is one of the sunfish. Come here, sweetie, I'm gonna do this really quick. This is one of the sunfish and they will get trapped. They will get trapped up in these areas. And when these little areas of the creek dry out, they pretty much go away at that point. They are not gonna make it. They're gonna become food. They're gonna become food for, come here, sweetie. They're gonna become food for the raccoons. Uh, there will be water snakes that will come up and take advantage of all these fish being trapped up here. Um, when these things dry up completely, all these beautiful sunfish, uh, they all die out, um, unfortunately, when they get trapped. If you don't make it out to deeper water in time, you're done for. Sorry, buddy, but I'm gonna let you go. Here we go, back in, back in you go. Back in you go, there you go. That's a good boy. I'm gonna let these crayfish go too. All right, out you go. There you go. There we go. Whew. So, for sure, it's tough life. If you don't make it into a good habitat, you're done for. That's it. Game over. Okay, right here in front of me, right in front of my feet, is the fowler's toad. Whoop. No, 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 come back, come back. All right, there we go. <laughs> good thing they're not real quick. <laughs> this is the fowler's toad. I know she's a fowler's toad because the way you can identify toads is if you look, they have right at the top, let me get a stick here I can point with. Uh, yeah, come here, stick. Here we go. Uh, even better, here we go. All right, if you look close, you will see right on the top of their head, there's a little ridge right there. That is called the cranial crest, and that little crest. And if that is touching, what is called the paratoid gland. That's the poison gland of a frog. You can see that right here on her side, that little thing right there. If it's completely touching that ridge, that crest right there, then that makes it the Fowler's toad. In the uh, American toad, it's typically either not touching or just a little piece of it is touching. And in other toads, it has a different configuration. And uh, the paratoid glands, that's the poison glands that produce um, the nasty taste and the, the yucky stuff that hopefully keeps animals from eating these guys. They'll puff themselves up really big and squirt this stuff under their paratoids. And then when a dog or something gets a bite of it, they're like, Ugh. Now other animals have learned to, uh, to eat through the poison. Um, the hognose snake, for instance, specializes in eating toads. Uh, these guys will inflate themselves. The hog nose will grab that toe. It has fangs in the back of its mouth. Does not use venom, but it has fangs in the back of its mouth that will then and pop that toad, bringing it back down to size so that it can swallow it down. Other animals, such as a crow, have learned to basically come down and kill it and eviscerate it, open up the belly, and just eat like the liver and the guts out, and they don't even get near the glands. So, but crows are pretty smart. Other animals, they just learn the hard way, don't mess with toads. So, this is a female. I know that a couple of different ways. Number one, the tympanum, that's that small circle right there, right behind their eye. The tympanum, that is very, very small uh, compared to what a, a male frog would be, which typically is larger, uh, or a, a, uh, the male uh, toad or frog typically is gonna be larger. Um, these little guys, I also know it's a female because if you look at her throat right here, uh, right underneath there, it is the same color as the belly. Uh, usually in the males, that's going to be a darker color. Uh, plus, she's a chunk. She's like really big. What? No, no, no. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Stop that. So, oh, uh, well. Oh, she jumped right into the water. All right. All right, girl. You're fine. You're okay. You're okay. So, you can see what she's doing. 
she's pumping with her throat right here. That's her way of, of getting oxygen into her nose so that she can breathe. She can get through her nostrils in the front, back down into her lungs. Uh, amphibians don't have a diaphragm. So they have no means the way we do of getting oxygen down there into, into their lungs. So they have to pump it uh, using their throat right there. They'll pump it in and out, similar to the way some birds do uh, and some other reptiles do. Now, as we could expect, amphibians, they're gonna be one of the main animals that we're gonna find around these, these creek habitats, these riparian habitats. So Fowler's Toad, awesome. I'm gonna put her back. There you go, sweetie. These deadfalls are a godsend to the animals that live in these small little creeks. Because oftentimes when these blowdowns go, their roots will gouge out a hole so deep in the creek that it almost never loses water, even during times of extreme drought. So hopefully the animals will find this one and be able to survive Hopefully this is deep enough. Oh no. Oh. And here's the little guy that didn't make it. Not sure why he died. This is a short-tailed shrew, a uh, Blarina brevicata. Is his name and you can see he's got ants all over him he's he's becoming part of the food chain he's returning his nutrients back to the environment uh, the shrews are known for their they have blood red teeth uh, they eat tremendous amounts of insects their their metabolism is so high they're eating like two times their weight in insects a day uh, which is just an insane amount I mean think about it if you ate Nothing but quarter pounders for McDonald's. And you weighed 100 pounds, two times your weight is 200 quarter pounders. That's a quarter of a pound. So that would be 800 quarter pounders a day. That's what I'm talking about. These guys are insane when it comes to eating insects. Uh, you can see the little short tail right there. That's where they get their name, short tail shrew. Uh, not mice. If you find them in your garden, that's a good thing. They're eating insects. In the garden, these guys are good. Okay, long tail mouse, they're eating your vegetables. But these guys, they're eating the insects. So, but not this guy anymore. The insects are, they're paying him back. Now, I'm gonna lay him down over here. These small creeks, man, talk about a story of life and death. Rainy season, they're rich, they're full. Animals are abundant around them. But as it gets dry, and the evaporation sets in and the rains go away and these little pools get concentrated, man, it just becomes, it just becomes a struggle. But that's the way it is in a fallen world. What can we do? Hopefully one day Jesus will make it all right again and uh, we'll be back to the way it's supposed to be.